Hello and welcome to Coffee with the Angels. I'm Katie Kiefer of AwakenTheInnerLight.com and CoffeeWithTheAngels.com. And we are out here in my backyard. It is kind of a rainy day and it is a Friday afternoon so you'll be hearing cars go by, I'm sure. And sometimes they're loud trucks and I will pause for those. I can hear one coming. <laughs> so, I don't know how well this is picking up on the video so I will listen to it afterwards and we'll find out. So Coffee with the Angels is a writing exercise that I do most mornings. And it's, I sit down and I have my coffee and I tune in. And these messages are typically something I'm curious about, something I'm going through, something I'm working on. Sometimes I've read a blog or watched a video and I'm like, that's a really cool concept or I, something really resonates with me and I'm like, there's, there's something more that I need here to kind of be able to put it together for myself. And Coffee with the Angels has been a fantastic exercise to do just that. So today is May 18th, 2018. And the other day I watched this video on how language influences the way we think. It's a TED Talk. I will post links in the comments and description, depending on if you're on Facebook or on um, YouTube so and I, I highly encourage you to go take a look at that because it's really cool stuff especially if you are a native English speaker and English is the only language you speak there's some really interesting things in there that might help you be able to adjust your own language and, and have some insights and understanding so on with the angel message and hopefully will only have light sprinkles because I'm out here without an umbrella. So, the angels say, language is living. It is alive, growing, and changing. It is infectious even for good or ill. Thought forms transmit from one to another instantaneously through language. Everything has a language. You who have pets know the subtle variations of their vocal noises and read their body language. So it is with everything. Trees speak through vibration and light. Rocks sing vibrationally. As you heal and raise your vibration, you will be able to perceive languages you hadn't before. Spoken language is a great gift and when used well creates wonderful vibrations. You can indeed speak into existence experiences far beyond what you already have. All too often language is used as a weapon when it was intended to be a tool for creation. Many of you have learned to create precisely with language. Your next step is to discreate the destruction and wounds. This may take generations to do and it starts with you. Undoing your own hurt, any hurt you passed on before your awakening, and continuing your awareness actively participating. This is how to heal and create with language. The spoken word is vitally important to pay attention to. Listen to yourself speak. Really listen with open awareness. Make changes as necessary to be kinder, more peaceful, more loving. Start here and you will see how quickly, you will see quickly how well you can create better experiences for yourself and others. Next, it is vital to close the vibrational gap. Bring your words, actions, and thoughts into congruency. This is where your sacred self can really shine. Alignment within self comes before alignment with anything else. Language is a magnificent tool and can be used creatively or destructively. Listen to yourself with honesty. This is a journey, learning a new way of being. And that's what the angels had to say. And I'm loving the thunder. So, 
the importance of language is something to really pay attention to and not just our spoken language. When we say the word language, we tend to think about the spoken word. And really, it's all of it. So pay attention to how the spoken language makes you feel. Pay attention to how what you are saying to others feels. Pay attention to the vibration. Pay attention to how they might feel. Because those are all clues. You can make amends if needed. And if it's awesome, you make note of it because it's like, whoo, let's do that one again. So one of the things that I found was really interesting in that video was the idea of blame being kind of woven into the language or inherent in at least the English language. So her example is that there's a photograph of a guy, is it a photograph or a drawing? I don't remember which, but it's a picture of a guy taking a picture of a vase. And as he's bending over, he knocks over the vase that's behind him. In the English language, we would say, he broke the vase, even though it's an accident. We have lots of big trucks around here. So even though it's an accident, there is this vibrational transmission of accusation of ill intention where there was none. And other languages don't necessarily have that. Another language would say the vase broke itself or the vase broke. Completely absent of any implied accusation, blame, shame, or anything. And I found that to be so important to pay attention to. Is are we accusing people without even realizing it because it's so built in? And that's worth taking a look at because think about it when it's coming at you how does that feel how does it feel when go somebody goes oh my god you did this that or the other and it was a total accident or something didn't it wasn't the it it was not in in the intention that's what i'm trying to say those are so important to pay attention to and it's important for us to pay attention to that our our thoughts and our language and our vibration and our, our behavior comes into congruency. And it's important just to recognize when something is off. Forgive yourself, forgive others where they don't know. This is a growing process. And if language is such a living, growing thing, then we have the power to change it. We have the power to really pay attention to what our intentions are and more clearly convey them. So many are so ingrained with shame and blame and burden and all of these different things that in their heart that's, that wasn't what they meant, that's not what they intended. This affects our vibration. This affects our ability to manifest. This affects everything in our life. And it deserves time and attention and adjustment where needed. And since I've been able to be more clear with my kids, and I'm still working on it, it's much better than it was, you know, eight years ago, but there's still improvement to be made. I get much better responses from them. My relationship with them is much better. And it can be difficult to do that when you're in a state of being triggered. So just recognize when you're being triggered and you may have moments where you kind of watch yourself do what you've done before going, oh my God, am I really doing this? It can be part of the process. It's okay, you can make amends because you're growing and you're learning and forward motion and progress matters. So, it's starting to rain a little harder and we're bringing this to a close. And I have a cat to take in because she don't like to be out here in the rain. <laughs> so anyway, 
I thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you have a fantastic weekend, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.